is Miss Cross, and today I'm going to show you how to throw out a slab. First thing I want you to do is take your bag of clay and make sure you have about this much clay. It's about the size of a grapefruit, or tell yourself about three palmfuls of clay should be enough for your slab. Now this is clay that I've already wedged, but let's go ahead and wedge on camera so that y'all can see me do it and get a little bit of extra practice. All right, so what you wanna do when you wedge your clay is you wanna break it up into a couple pieces. And what this does is takes the clay that is dry because it's on the outside of the ball of clay or the block of clay, and it kind of takes it and mixes it with the clay that's inside, which is more moist. Then I'm gonna throw all that clay into a pile just like that. After I've started my pile of clay, I'm going to pick up the clay and put it between my palms. And if you look at my body, I actually leaned over the clay because I'm going to use the weight of my upper body to help me push the clay down and pull the clay up. So I'm going to push down with my palms and pull up with my fingers. Push, lift, push, lift. And I'm going to keep doing that over and over. Now I'm actually pushing with this part of my hand and I'm actually pushing in and down at the same time instead of just pushing straight down. If I just push straight down, then I'm actually gonna get a hot dog instead of a nice ram's head. So I'm gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna do it about 25 to 30 times. All right, now if you have wedged your clay correctly, you're gonna see what they call a ram's head. So if you look, it kind of looks a little bit like a ram with his face and his nose right here in the front and then his horns on either side. If you turn your lump of clay and look at the side, you should see where it's starting to form a spiral and that's how you know that you've wedged your clay correctly. After you've wedged your clay, I want you to push the part of his nose back into your lump of clay and then kind of hit either side. All this is doing is further compressing your clay and helping you get it into that ball shape. Then I want you to hit your clay into a ball. And you are now ready to work with your clay. If you look at my ball up closely, you can see that it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly perfectly round and there can still be some creases in the clay. All right, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have a big open space to work and then you're going to have your um, workspace in front of you and have out either a um, piece of fabric or a piece of wood, something that you can throw out on. If you throw down on something like a laminate tabletop, then your clay is actually going to stick to that and it's not going to come back up. So you need something that's going to release the clay like fabric, paper, or wood. All right, once I've got this, I'm going to throw it straight down and it's flattened one side of that ball of clay. Then I'm going to flip it, put it in my hand the opposite way, and then throw it straight down again. All right, once I've done that, I've got like a really thick chunky hamburger patty or cookie looking piece of clay. And then I'm going to focus on stretching it out to form a slab or flat piece of clay. So I'm going to throw it again, but this time, watch my hands. I'm not throwing it straight down anymore. I'm actually pulling my hand across in front of me and that's stretching out the clay. Each time I pick up the clay, I actually want to turn it a different direction. Turning the clay is going to allow me to keep it in a round shape instead of making a long oval. Now for this next project, you're going to cut your clay into a five by five inch tile or flat piece of clay. And so you really only need something that's a little bit bigger than that right there. Once you have a piece of clay that's large enough, you want to leave it down on the table in front of you and you actually want to take your rib, it needs to be clean, mine is not, and you're going to use that to smooth and compress the surface of the clay. So I've got a clean rib now, 
and I'm gonna take some water. It's better if it's in a spray bottle, so if you have an extra spray bottle at home, that would be really helpful. And I'm just gonna spray the clay once. If you don't have a spray bottle, then just wet your hands in the sink and then just kind of rub some water on the surface of the clay. That will help the rib slide more easily across the surface. Then I'm gonna take, I have a Walmart gift card that's empty, and I'm gonna pull that across the surface of the clay and it's gonna get rid of any wrinkles or any ugly spots or any fingerprints, anything like that. I'm just smoothing that away. And I can go over the clay as many times as I want. I can also go both directions. So I just swiped my rib this direction. I can actually swipe the rib the opposite direction as well. And like I said, we're actually gonna cut this into a tile shape. It's gonna be a five by five inch square. So um, I am not so worried about the edges of my clay because I'm actually gonna cut that off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a ruler and I'm gonna use that ruler to help me measure my clay. Now the rule here is measure twice so you only have to cut once. If I cut too soon before I'm done measuring, then I have to re-wedge my clay if I make a mistake. If I just measure and draw lightly, then I can um, fix any mistakes. So I'm taking my ruler, I'm gonna set it down on my clay, and then I'm actually taking a needle tool and I'm marking five inches on the surface of my slab. Then I'm just very lightly tracing a line against the edge of the ruler. I'm not pressing all the way down into the clay yet. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line it up on the line that I just drew, and I'm gonna mark five inches again. After I've done that, I'm gonna very lightly pull my needle tool across the surface of the clay. And I wanna make sure that I have a nice 90 degree angle there. That's why I use the edge of the ruler to help me get a 90 degree angle. All right, so at this point, you should be able to see my work surface as well as me in the background. So what I'm gonna do is continue showing you how I was cutting and measuring the tile beforehand. So I've got a line that I've just very lightly, like barely touched the surface of the clay to draw. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna make sure that I set that against the line that I already had to get a nice 90 degree angle. So it's actually gonna look like a square. And because I had to turn my ruler the other way, I'm actually gonna work backwards And that's my five inches. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and measure very carefully five inches again and just lightly drag my needle tool across the surface of the clay and measure that one more time and I don't want to rush here. I don't want to assume that it's five inches. What if I accidentally didn't have a 90 degree angle and it was slightly off? So this is my chance to check my work. All right, so once I'm pretty confident, and I'm gonna eyeball it, and since I've made a lot of these through the years, I know what five inches look like. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Now, Y'all remember, I made this little line in the clay right here to show y'all how to draw a line. If you do make a mistake, if you only draw a light line instead of cutting the clay, then you can actually just take your rib and smooth away any mistakes. If you cut through the clay, then you're gonna have to re-wedge it and start over. So remember, if you draw lightly, you can erase any mistakes like I just did right there. Now at this point, I don't wanna get overconfident and assume that I can cut a straight line. So I'm actually gonna use the ruler as a guide and hold the needle tool straight and drag it across the surface of the ruler to make a nice straight cut. And then I'm gonna do that on all four sides. All right, 
right, so once I've cut out my piece right here, I actually want to leave that piece of clay alone for quite some time. One thing about clay that's unique is that clay remembers what it goes through or it remembers your touch. So just like I'm picking up this clay and moving it, when I fire the clay, the clay is going to go back whatever direction I bend it. So since we want this piece of clay to stay flat, we're actually going to leave it alone on the table for at least two or three hours. And that's going to vary depending on the humidity in your home. So you want to leave this clay alone until it is leather hard. And the way that you know your clay is leather hard is when you pick it up, it's going to be stiff and it's not going to bend or move. If you can stick your fingernail in the clay, it is leather hard. If it starts to turn a lighter color, you need to spray your clay and make sure it does not dry out anymore because if it's changing color to almost like a chalky white color, that means that it is turning bone dry and it's getting too dry to work with. So you have to keep it in that happy medium between wet and dry. If you do this with your slab, you see how it's bent? You can put it back on the table and flatten it out. But what's going to happen is whenever that's put in the kiln, it's going to remember that I did that to it while it was wet. And then this clay is actually going to curl back the way that I moved it and it's not going to be flat anymore. So make sure that you leave that clay alone until it is leather hard. What I want you to do with all this extra clay that you have left over is you're going to wedge that clay because that's the clay that you're going to use for the rest of your project. So take that excess clay, throw it into a pile, and wedge away. Once you've hit your clay into a ball, after wedging it, you are done for the day. So what I want you to do is take your excess clay and put it back in your Ziploc bag, spray that bag with water, and make sure that your clay does not dry out. Push out all the extra air, and close the bag. Then what I want you to do is take either a pencil or your needle tool and go ahead and write a potter's mark on the corner of this slab. So what I'm going to do tomorrow and what you're going to do in a few hours is actually take this slab and flip it over and this will be the back. And then I'll smooth the opposite side and that will actually be the top of my project. All right, that's it for today. Hope you have a wonderful afternoon.